Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. I hope you've had a lovely week. And today is a little bit of a different video. I wanted to be a bit vulnerable with you all and I wanted to open up about some things that have been a key part of the person that I am now. And it's not gonna be an easy video for me to make. I've told myself I will not cry, I won't cry, but there is a possibility that I will cry. I'm a crier, that's why I wear waterproof mascara. I want to talk to you a bit about self-esteem and particularly my journey with self-love and how that actually stemmed from self-hatred for a long time. Yeah. Self-esteem is a really complicated thing. If you have quite good self-esteem, it can be possibly a little bit difficult to understand why someone might have low self-esteem. We all only get an insight into people's lives. Even some of your closest friends and family, you only see a snippet of what goes on in their lives. So we don't know necessarily what their self-esteem is like 100% of the time. And just because someone's really confident and loves themselves or seemingly loves themselves outwardly, you don't know what's going on internally and how they see themselves when they look in the mirror. In the past, when I've opened up about my self-esteem, I'm often faced with comments like, why you're pretty or why you're funny, why you, you, you are able to talk and have conversations with people and all sorts of different things. And that response Sometimes it helps and sometimes it actually feeds the low self-esteem, oddly enough. I just want to vocalise my self-esteem journey and share with you some things that have happened that have affected me and affected the way I look at myself and how I dealt with it very poorly in the past. Quite often the videos I make are about me saying advice and things that have helped me to overcome a certain thing, but actually I think sometimes being vulnerable and telling you the negative stories about how I was will help to sort of solidify that I'm only human and when I give sort of advice and things like that. It's not coming from a place of insincerity, it's coming from a place where I've actually used that advice to get me somewhere. So that brings me on to my self-esteem journey, I guess. I have never particularly liked how I look, but I don't remember as a child being insecure about my face or my body particularly as a young child i was always insecure about my hair um because obviously children bully each other and being ginger you're just an easy target i don't hold any resentment to anyone that made ginger jokes when i was a small child because you know growing up is hard and they're just ginger jokes at the end of the day like, if you're going to pick on anything, go for it. <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> if you can't think of anything more creative than to pick on me for my hair, whatever. But I do think growing up being bullied was... Maybe possibly, maybe in my developmental stages of life, um, just maybe cemented this idea that I wasn't good enough. But again, I wasn't bullied severely. I've got, I have heard some stories of people being severely bullied and I was nothing like that um, and I knew I sometimes bit back at people um, as children do um, and I wasn't always the nicest child so 
it's one of those things, isn't it, that I don't think, or I don't blame bullying for it. I don't really blame anything for this low self-esteem, except possibly I didn't work hard enough to love myself earlier. So I then went into secondary school. I really didn't like myself. I wasn't a popular child. Uh, I had some close friends who I loved very dearly. We were probably all thrown together and were a bit of the kind of indescript odd ones out, but I loved them a lot. They were gorgeous. And secondary school for me, or high school, I guess, I assume, in the US, was just, I mean, pretty, I don't know, I, I dealt with some mental health things. Um, I just know throughout my whole teenage years, I didn't like who I was and I was very conflicted internally for just wanting to be somebody else. At the time, I think everybody was fake tanning and they were dyeing their hair bleach blonde and, you know, I was that kind of alternative kid who shaved the side of her head. I don't know why I did that. I don't know why anyone let me do that. <laughs> but I was... just a bit of an oddball really and that was that was fine I was I was fine with that it was only sort of into my 20s that I realized I really didn't like myself and I think it went past the point of not liking myself and I actually actively I think I actively hated myself I would drink heavily binge drink um, I didn't respect myself, um, I didn't eat really at all, um, at university I lived off packet Caesar salad, but without the cheese, or the Caesar, so I guess just lettuce, <laughs> and my skin was quite bad, not, not extremely bad. Um, I know some people really suffer with acne and that wasn't me but my skin was never perfect and I think when you have low self-esteem you get into a complex about perfection and on the days my skin was possibly better I didn't see it as better I just knew it wasn't perfect so it wasn't enough and yeah I just I wasn't eating enough which actually probably contributed to the poor skin situation and I had really thin hair and I was just a bit of a mess to be honest emotionally all over the place and it wasn't okay for anybody. When I moved into my first flat again I wasn't eating properly at all. I would go sort of a few weeks not eating properly and then deciding no I'm gonna eat properly for no other reason other than it was gonna make my skin better but that was again only striving for perfection. It wasn't because I thought I deserved to eat well, it was because if I eat well my skin will be better or my hair will be better or you know a number of things but that would only ever last sort of two or three days where I'd eat really well and then give up because I thought well I don't, I don't think I was particularly thinking about being healthy I was just thinking about this image of perfection and I remember I'd see photos of these gorgeous blonde slim tanned perfectly chiseled women um, and I think I built up a bit of a resentment to people like that because I was never going to be like that and I had this idea that the only way you could be happy was to look like that and unless I was prepared to dye my hair, go and 
sit in a tanning bed for a few hours every month and go to the gym and eat well. That was never going to happen and I resented that a lot and it also made me oddly judgmental because I would automatically assume anybody that looked like that would be judging me because I didn't look like them but actually it ended up me judging them because I assumed they'd judge me. Anyway, so it got really bad and I was really unhappy with myself and how I looked, how I sounded. There was no element of myself that I liked. I really didn't like my own company. I would spend time drinking because that was a way to feel more confident and not worry and switch off that part of my brain that was um, overthinking the way I looked. And one morning I woke up and I really didn't want to look at myself in the mirror. I was brushing my teeth and I looked at myself and I didn't want to see it. So I essentially got rid of all of the mirrors in my flat. Looking back, this was very counterproductive. It meant I couldn't see if I'd, you know, removed my makeup in the evening. Obviously I had a little handheld mirror that I put away to do my makeup in the first place, which was a struggle. Um, and actually I went through a period of not really wearing makeup at all because I didn't really want to go outside. So the only time I really put on makeup was when I'd go out with my friends to have a drink um, and then I'd have a mirror. But because I'd got rid of the rest, I couldn't really see when I'd taken my makeup off properly, uh, which was probably a bad idea when you've got bad skin. Oh, so never looked at a full body reflection for for quite a while. Uh, it was a long time. Even now, I catch myself looking in a full body mirror and feeling a bit like a stranger because I've never, ever done that. It's never. I've always avoided it at all costs. I didn't really realise or register that this was happening, which might seem quite a weird thing to say, but I was so in the middle of it, I couldn't really escape it because I just knew I didn't want to see myself. And if I couldn't see myself, other people couldn't, which is ridiculous. Obviously, people could see me because People have eyes. It was only when a friend of mine came round and she wanted to get ready at my house and there were no mirrors for her to get ready in. And she said to me, where, where are all your mirrors? She knew that I had mirrors before and now suddenly I didn't. And I cried because I think being called out on it or having an external person coming in and actually identifying there was a problem and vocalising it made it really real. That was sort of the first time that I opened up and I said I didn't like myself. It wasn't a question of, oh, I just don't love myself right now. I'm having a period of not enjoying my own company. It was that for a long time, and for my entire adult life, I didn't like myself. I, I, I told her that I hated myself. Looking back on that time is really hard because I've come a long way since then. My self-esteem is still incredibly low and there are still some things I haven't personally dealt with yet and some other stories that might come up in future videos that I haven't processed myself so I'm not prepared to put them out there quite yet. But looking back, I wouldn't 
have treated my worst enemy like that, how I was treating myself. And every time I have a thought now where I don't want to eat lunch or I don't want to eat breakfast or I don't want to eat, I remember how sad I was and how all I want to do now is to look after that girl who got rid of all her mirrors, broke down, didn't like herself. I just want to look after her. I think we look at the past versions of ourselves and treat them just like a memory, but actually we're the same people, even if we change. So I like to remind myself that I'm still her and she's still me, she's still in me. And when that sort of self-hatred comes up or when I notice myself judging someone for being very attractive because they might be judging me, I have to step back and go, firstly, they're probably not doing that and they're probably a gorgeous person just as much on the inside as they are on the outside. And secondly, I just have to remember that I was vulnerable and I needed the person I am now, then, to look after me. Where is my self-esteem at now? It's a rocky one. I really dislike how I look most of the time. But I've come to a place where I've realised actually how I look on the outside is quite an artificial way of looking at life anyway. Sometimes I allow myself to be more upset about it, but other times I've tried to ignore it and maybe try and better myself on the inside and just be a nicer person on the inside um, and with other people because realistically I could be the prettiest person in the world and nasty and I would rather be kind and nice than be a six foot blonde tanned model. To some of you this might be trivial and that's fine. Um, I haven't gone into great detail about it but this was very hard for me to talk about. Self-esteem is tricky, really tricky and if you're struggling with it please do give yourself time and credit when you make a small breakthrough because it matters and it's a big huge huge deal. Um, sometimes the tiniest things can make a difference and I know that when I've made small changes it's made a huge difference to me so yeah I hope my vulnerability has helped somewhat I'm sorry this video hasn't been quite so scripted I mean none of my videos are scripted really are they <laughs> um, but I'm sorry it's been a bit more sort of all over the place I just wanted to get it out there and maybe let someone know that they're not alone if they're experiencing a similar thing but please do seek help if you need it you know the drill I am not a medical professional so do go and talk to somebody there's always somebody available and please look after yourselves and if you don't love yourself today that's okay we will all love you enough to fill that void for now so yes thank you for listening and i will see you in the next one bye post credit people that was a lot that was heavy but we did it i hope you're okay and i will see you in the comments bye